Okay, so I'm going to make rice pudding, but I'm going to make it, instead of in the slow cooker, I'm going to make it in the oven of the traditional method. So, I've got my pudding rice here. Here we go, Tesco pudding rice, or short grain rice, just. I'm going to have um, about 110 grams of pudding rice, so 115 we'll call it in. 115 grams of pudding rice. To that I'm going to add um, some vanilla. I like vanilla, I like it in everything. I've got some vanilla extract, which we're going to pop in, about a teaspoon. So just a little drizzle, basically. If you like a bit more, stick a bit more in, it's all right, it's not gonna harm anything. Then I'm going to take some sugar. There you go, everyday caster sugar. And I'm going to put about 40 to 50 grams in. It's, it's up to you really how much you want in. But I would say 40 grams is about average, really. You don't want it too sweet and you don't want it too there we go, 40, 40 grams. You don't want it overdone with the sugar either. Okay, once you've done that, it's time to add your evaporated milk. Now, I love evaporated milk in my um, puddings, in my rice puddings. I don't know why, I think it's just the way it's brought up. But we're going to stick a can of carnation in. One can of carnation milk going in. sit for a minute and we'll get the rest of it along with one pint of milk now you can use whole milk or you can use semi in this instance I've got semi skimmed milk so it's going to put a pint in there so that's 570 mils going in Once you've done that, give it a stir. Get all those lovely things mixed about. And then we're going to, I'm just going to grate on my fine grater. This one here, a little bit of nutmeg on top, not a lot. If you overdo it, it can be overpowering. So just enough to leave a, a little sheen on the top. That's all we want. I'm going to put that into an oven, which will be gas mark two, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Celsius, until it's cooked to my liking. The recipes often say you should cook it for an hour to two hours, but I like to put it in until it's nice and thick and gooey, which is how my husband likes it. So it's roughly about two hours, but we'll keep an eye on it. So this is my rice pudding. It's been in the oven for two and a half hours. So as you can see, an hour isn't anywhere near long enough. And there is still quite a bit of um, give in it. I'll give it, give it a shake because it's just come out. You can see there's a bit of wibble wobble and a bit of fluid there. Um, the rice will continue to soak this up while it's um, setting, so it's going to be lovely and thick, which is what we're after. Anyway, hope you enjoy. For my Greek orange pie dish, or as they call it, wait for this, Porto Calopita. Porto Calopita. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm going, I've greased, sorry, I've greased a 8 by 12 inch dish and I'm going to tear up a packet of phyllo pastry and put it into a dish. So into my dish I'm going to tear this phyllo pastry. Okay, just, it needs to dry out a bit. It is quite dry to start off with but we're going to dry it out a bit and hopefully tearing it up into pieces will help that. Woo! Apart from throwing it on the floor, which isn't good. 
Okay, it's a good way of using up any phyllo pastry that you've got lying around that you may be used for something and you didn't use it all, which is often the case with phyllo pastry, I find. You use it for spring rolls or something and you end up with about three pieces or four pieces left. Well, this, will, this is good to use it up that way. So just get it all torn into your bowl. So now I'm going to put um, 300 grams of sugar into my saucepan, along with half a litre of boiling hot water. So for the uninitiated, that's 500 mils. Pop that in. Into that is going to go the zest of an orange, which I have here, and the juice of this orange as well. And as I say, every time I do this, the zest is the coloured part, not the white part. So be careful you don't get the, the white part in it. So we're going to zest this and then we're going to juice it. If you don't have an orange to hand, you can use orange extract, about a teaspoon should do it, along with some shop-bought orange juice if you want, about a quarter cup. There we go. And we're going to just give that a bang. Put my orange in half and juice it. Don't know if it will fit into my juicer, but we'll give it a whirl. Oh yes, there we go. And just gently give it a juice. Trying not to get it everywhere. Here's one. And <laughs> Excuse me guys, it's going everywhere, there you go, apart from spilling it everywhere. <laughs> so grabbing a wooden spoon, there you go, we're going to put it on a low heat and we're going to reduce it slightly. I'm going to wait until all the sugar's dissolved and reduce it just slightly. So my mixture, my sugar syrup has been boiling now for about five minutes and it seems to have reduced by at least a quarter. So I'm going to take it off the heat and we're going to let it cool. Okay, so in my bowl now I've got four large eggs. To that I'm going to add 80 mils of oil. Now this is vegetable oil, it's just going in there. Make sure it all goes in. We're going to add 70 grams of sugar, this is caster sugar, 250 mils of Greek yogurt, a teaspoon of vanilla, the zest and juice of an orange, so here we go again. Okay, put it to one side for a minute. And then chop your orange in half and we'll put the juice in as well. And as before, <laughs> be careful because it flies everywhere. So easy does it. Make sure you've got it all in. Done it again. Don't know where that went. There go, there's one. Oops. And there. And two. I have to find that. I know some of it went on me. Once you've got it done, pop it to one side. 
Now take in a whisk, whisk all that together. When you've done that, it's time to add two teaspoons of baking powder. So that's one, two. And again, make sure you get rid of any lumps that that might cause. When you've done that, it's time to add your phyllo pastry. So in it all goes. And then using, not a whisk guys, because it won't work. Using a spoon, just amalgamate it all. Just push it underneath, break it up, whatever you need to do with it guys, it's fine. Totally cover your phyllo pastry in this stuff, in your custard. When you've got it done as much as you can, take in your baking dish, Pour the ingredients of your bowl with the phyllo pastry in and the custard into your baking dish. Okay. And my advice is to use a spatula because the spoon's not big enough. <laughs> she says, how many sec I need a spatula? Get a spatula and just scrape your bowl dry. Once you've done that, make sure you spread out your phyllo pastry in your bowl so you've got it evenly distributed throughout the bowl. If it's in big clumps, try and break it up a bit. Now we're going to bake it in the oven. Gas bag four, for 35 minutes to 40 minutes. Okay, so I've just taken this out of the oven. As you can see, it looks quite good actually. The custard is set. All I need to do now is score it into portion sizes and then pour over oops, the, uh, the syrup that we made earlier. There we go. It's a shame it's cracking it, but we need it to crack to actually pour the syrup in. So let's not worry about that. I can tell you it's lovely and fluffy from the feel of it. Okay, and now taking our syrup that we made earlier, we're going to pour it over the pie. And what we have to do is wait until this is completely cold and put it in the fridge and this is generally served cold this, this dessert so here we go we have to wait for all of the juice to be settled in and to go into like a sticky format it's a bit like a jelly or so never mind we'll leave that to soak in and we'll see how it goes well the family absolutely loved it that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing, please think about liking and subscribing. Until next week, goodbye.